Welcome back to Wake Up America. I'm Rachel Roller. The coronavirus pandemic causing several hidden consequences over the past year, like a spike in opiate addiction, also to a hike in medical bills. So let's break that down a bit now with business and market analyst Seth Denson. Seth, good morning to you. Do we have you, Seth? Good morning. There you are. Yep, you're All good right. to go. Good to go. Make sure that mic's on. Yeah, we need to hear what you have to say because let's talk about this. These aren't regular medical bills. These are bills that are reaching a million dollars. Patients seeing a bill up to a million dollars. How is that possible? Well, listen, I, you know, unfortunately, this is a recognition that we have a really expensive health care system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while there have been legislators that have tried to do things like the Affordable Care Act, for example, it primarily focused on the insurance system. And the insurance system is just a financing mechanism. What it didn't do is recognize that we need to drive down the cost of health care. And so when you're in a pandemic situation, we have a fee-for-service system, not an outcomes-based health care system. So the more tests, the more treatments, the more things that are done, the more the bill goes up, and that's what we're seeing right now. And how can a patient advocate for themselves? You know, in situations like this, during the pandemic, it was so unclear what we needed, what we were supposed to ask our doctor, what we were supposed to do. And as you mentioned, all these different tests and services are then just kind of piled on without you really realizing that comes with a cost. Well, it certainly does. And unfortunately, healthcare is one of the areas where we buy and then we learn, right? It's not we learn and then we buy. So we don't really always know what it is we're going to be billed for until after we've had treatments done. And so this is one of those key areas where I think there's two things that patients can do. First, try to do as much research as you can beforehand, understanding, make sure hospital systems near you, emergency rooms, those things are in network. Uh, do your research on, on nefarious billings from these hospital mm -hmm. systems so you can be ahead of it. But then the second thing is, once you do get those bills, don't just pay them, right? You need to research them, ask for line item bills, look for advocacy groups that are out there to help you understand it. And sadly, it's been estimated that anywhere between 40 and as much as 80% of medical bills are wrong, that's rarely to your favor. So don't just pay it. Make sure you're doing some research beforehand. Okay, I want to bring in neurologist Dr. Russell Saraski right now. He's going to join us. He's board certified in addiction medicine. That was the other topic that we're seeing as an underlying hidden issue with COVID. Dr. Saraski, why do you think it is that we're seeing this rise in opioid cases? Do you think it was, in fact, the isolation and, and being stuck at home, perhaps people who don't have a support system, who don't have family, and they were just alone? Well, thanks so much for having me on today. Look, I'd like to start by making one fact abundantly clear, and that is that it wasn't necessarily the virus itself, but it was the horrendous lockdowns, which have caused more than 90,000 opioid overdose deaths, and that's the highest number of deaths from drug overdoses ever recorded during a one-year period. When they locked down churches, that meant that all AA meetings also went and got shut down at the same time. And when they locked down gyms, and took away people's jobs, but made sure to keep liquor stores and marijuana dispensaries open, well, this is the inevitable result. Right. Now, Seth, I want to go back to you. If anyone at home has been to a doctor in the past year and a half, whether it was COVID-related or not, it's overwhelming. There's still that heightened sense of awareness, and you kind of get lost in your train of thought of what you might typically do when you go to the doctor. So how important would you say is it to write down everything that happens in that consultation, maybe even who you spoke to, what they said, and, and everyone you encountered? Yeah, I think it's important not to only document the conversations, but also recognize that you need to ask as many questions before you have things done. Listen, mm -hmm. doctors, nurses, these people are fantastic, but oftentimes they're not running the billing system. That's the business side of healthcare, And the business side can be very opportunistic. Uh, and so we saw this during the testing when someone would go in for a COVID test, but all of a sudden they get thousand dollar bills for all these other tests that were the result of that. So again, the key thing is ask beforehand, ask, what is this? for? What am I going to pay for it? Ask for what's called a predetermination of cost so that you know what it is you're likely going to be paying before you get the procedure done. That way you're protecting yourself on the back end. Yeah, and it doesn't come as such a surprise when that bill comes in the mail later. Dr. Saraski, you, you mentioned those numbers. Let's talk about those for just a minute. Maryland seeing a jump of 19 percent in fatal overdoses. Some counties in the state seeing 54 percent increases, according to city data there. Do you think we're still going to see these spikes post-pandemic? Well, I hope and I believe that actually the numbers will start to slow down of these, of these overdoses. Look, another major contributing factor was 
you know, we have a medicine uh, called Vivitrol, which is a once monthly injection, which blocks opioids from actually entering the brain. And thousands of people were kept from these injections due to the lockdowns, many ultimately who overdosed. And I believe that these government policies have caused far more suffering and death than, than COVID ever could. What do you propose the solution is, Dr. Sarasky? We need to get people back to the services for addiction recovery, which they were separated from during these lockdowns. I'm start, you know, I'm the medical director for uh, several outpatient treatment centers called Bridge Back to Life, and we're starting to see people reconnect to these healthcare services that help them with their recovery and get back to their 12-step meetings. And I believe that we're going to continue to move forward. Okay, and Seth, let me ask you, we talk a lot about the new normal. Many of us don't want to adapt to that. We want to go back to what we're used to. But do you think these high medical bills are part of that new normal? Well, I think high medical bills have been part of the past. Mm. Unfortunately, we just didn't see it as rampant. So, yeah, they, they're, high medical bills are here to stay. And until we get legislators serious about recognizing we need to move away from the fee-for-service system that we have here in the United States, we're not going to see that change. The Affordable Care Act and the elimination of lifetime maximums did one thing. It gave a blank check to the system. We need to rally around to drive costs down. But as consumers, we need to do a better job of doing our own research, both pre- and post-treatment. All right, Seth Denson, Dr. Russell Sarasky, thank you both for joining us. Thanks. Thank you.